want your text to stand out? How about... That was an example of typography. Oftentimes it is referred to as kinetic typography because the text is moving. So how about if we dive right into creating this cool effect? In this webisode, we're going to take a quote from the famous author, Mark Twain, and turn it into kinetic typography, like so. In this video tutorial, we're going to recreate part of what you just saw. So let's get started. First off, let's open up Motion and choose DVC Pro HD 1080i 60 and then hit the return key. I like to see my full working area, so hit the Shift and Z keys. All right, that feels more roomy. Instead of the default black background, I want a white one. Click on the rectangle shape tool and create a rectangle that covers the background. Or you could have added a color solid. To help soften up our white background, let's add a vignette. Go up to Add Filter, Stylize, Vignette. Notice how the vignette pushes our eyes to the center of the screen where we'll be placing our text. I feel the vignette is a little harsh, so let's adjust it a little. Make sure the Filters tab is selected and then increase the size to about 80 points. Let's help blend the gray to white by increasing the fall off. One looks good. We now have a nice, clean background that will gently direct our eyes to the center of the screen. Next, you can't have typography without text. Click on the text tool and then click on our canvas. Type the word U. Be sure to make it all caps. We can't see our word because it is white like our background, so click on the HUD button and then click on the color well. There is a very specific shade of blue I would like to make this word. Click on the color slider button and make sure you have the RGB slider selected. Make the red zero, hit the tab key and then type in 44. Hit the tab key and then type in 91. We have a nice dark blue that I would like to use throughout this project. Because of that, drag it from here into one of these little boxes. That way, I can always click on this little box to retrieve the color we just created. Then, we don't have to waste time typing in those numbers every time I need that color. Next, we need to choose a font. Motion comes with a lot of fonts, so which one to choose? You could play Will of Fonts, but it's not recommended. Obviously, there is no right or wrong answer here. There are plenty of attributes that make a font distinctive. However, I would like to focus on serif and sans serif fonts because about half of your default fonts are serif ones while the other half are sans serif typefaces. The serif is the detail on the end of the strokes that make up a letter. I think bold sans serif fonts stack well, whereas skinny serif fonts feel like they have big gaps when stacked. Because I want to stack words in this project, I think Tahoma Bold looks really cool for this project. So let's go with it. Now change the font size to 25. If you open up the project pane, you can see that you have the word U on one layer. I would like to put the word cannot on another layer, so hit the escape key. Notice how the escape key got us out of the text entry mode. So if I hit the H key, it doesn't add an H next to our word U, but selects the hand tool. Hit the T key to access the text tool and type cannot. Notice cannot is on its own layer. Click on the color well and choose the crayon box. Choose the ocean crayon. Make the text 288 in size. Hit the escape key and move the text over so U is in the C. Select U and then hit F1 to open up the properties tab so you can change its rotation to negative 30, negative uh, 32. That way the word U lines up nicely with the C. 
If the dynamic guides are getting in the way of moving the word you, hold down the command key to temporarily disable the snapping feature so you can move the text more freely. Adding movement to our whole piece will make it look a lot cooler. You could animate the group that the text is in, or you could add and animate a camera. I feel it helps to simplify things if you use the camera. The camera in motion gives you the ability to take your project to a whole new level. This tool can help you create sophisticated motion graphics with depth, just like you're seeing here. So let's get this party started and add a camera. Go up to the new camera icon and select it. Click on the switch to 3D button. Notice how we gained some camera control options. Up here we had the 3D view tools which are the pan tool, orbit tool, and the dolly tool. Hit the comma key to activate the safe zones. Click and drag on the pan tool to move your text in the center of the screen. Be sure to use the title safe lines to help you move your text into the center of the screen. Click and drag on the dolly tool to get it a little closer to the text. That's perfect, except for the placement of the background. Currently, everything in our group is in 3D. If you make the background 2D, it will not be affected by the camera. So, right-click on the rectangle layer and choose Group. Next, click here to make our group 2D. Notice how our icon is no longer stacked but flat. Last, drag our new group out of the old one by dragging it out of the main group. A position indicator appeared. Its length indicates whether the new group will go below the other group or go inside the other group. When the position indicator's length is extended, it will go below the other group. Notice the plus symbol. Check that out! Our background is back to where it was originally. So let's call our new group BKG for background and then minimize it. Now for the fun stuff. Let's animate the camera. Go to 2 seconds and 5 frames. If you can't see time code, be sure to click on the current frame icon and set it to time code. In the properties window, mark a position and rotation keyframe. To do this, hold down the option key and click on the little diamond here and here. I want to move the playhead 25 frames back. To better illustrate this, close out the properties pan by hitting the F5 key and then open up the timing pane by hitting the F6 key. Hit the negative key and then type 25. Notice how it says negative 25 in the current frame field. Hit the return key and the playhead moves back 25 frames. Click on the record button so when we move the camera, Motion will create new keyframes. Click and drag on the dolly tool to get really close to the text. Utilize the pan tool as well. I find it easier to rotate the camera in the properties tab. Remember, we rotated the text U negative 32 degrees. So, we should rotate the camera negative 32 as well. Let's make sure everything is nice and centered. Notice how our text just looks terrible. I mean, look at that. If you ever have that problem, don't worry. Just go up to Render and set the quality to Best. Now that your text is nice and sharp, your real-time playback may be sluggish. If that's the case, set it back to Normal, knowing that it will not look good until you set it back to Best. Alright, let's move on. Let's take a look. I'm digging it. Let's turn off the record button by hitting the A key. Now let's add some more words. Hit the T key and type ON, then hit the return key and type DEPEND in all caps. Alright, more invisible text. Let's highlight DEPEND and click on the color well. Choose the new blue color we created. Next, highlight the word ON and choose the ocean crayon. Close that out. Hit the escape key so we can see our new words. 
having the different shade of blue will help the darker word pop out. In the HUD, change the alignment from left to right. In the canvas, change the rotation to negative 90 degrees. Note that you can only do that when the Adjust 3D Transform tool is on. One thing I would like to point out about point size, okay, sorry for the pun. Point size can help you emphasize words. Notice how this can also be read, help you. If used correctly, points are more than just measurements and can be used to help you better communicate your message. So, be sure to use point size to your artistic advantage. Select the text tool so we can alter the text. Let's get the word depend a little bigger, so highlight it and make it size 99. Then select on and make it size 51 points. Let's talk about adjusting the horizontal spacing in our word. This is letter spacing, or as Motion likes to call it, tracking. Not to be confused with kerning. Kerning is something different. Let me break it down. In this example, tracking is the total distance between letters in a word. Tracking increases the space between the letters evenly, whereas kerning is the distance between two letters. When I created the anatomy of type graphic, I ran into a problem. Notice the uneven spacing between the F and the T in this example. Luckily, in motion, when you click in between the F and T, you can then adjust the kerning. If you have anything selected, kerning then becomes disabled. Next, let's talk about leading, which is called line spacing in motion. So, tracking is the horizontal spacing between letters, while leading is the vertical spacing between lines. It's called leading because back in the old printing press days, when a person would set the type by hand, they would place lead strips in between the lines of letters. Move our words down so they fill in this empty space in the T. In our case, the line spacing between on and depend is way too awkward. So adjust the line spacing in the HUD to negative 27. Sweet. Did you notice how the words were behind the word cannot? Hit F1 to open up the properties tab. Notice that the Z position is around negative 300. If you select cannot, its Z position is zero. So make the Z position zero as well. This is because the new text was based on the new camera's position. Hit the escape key and get the words nicely situated in the T's empty space. In order to animate these words independent of one another, we need to separate them. I'm going to hit the command and D key to duplicate our words. Let's delete on in the copy and then select the on layer and delete the word depend. We now have separated words. I want to animate the word depend so it looks like it's shooting out of the T. In order to do that, we need to adjust the word's anchor point. To show what I'm talking about, let's rotate the word. Notice how it's rotating around our anchor point. Undo that. And right click on the word depend and choose anchor point. Let's move it up to the D. Right click on depend again and choose transform 3D. I'll quickly rotate it and you can see how moving the anchor point affects the rotation. Hit F1 to open up the properties tab. Jump 30 frames down the timeline by making sure nothing is selected. Let's land the playhead at the beginning of the clip. Then hit the plus and three zero keys. Hit the return key and select our layer with depend in it. Mark a scale keyframe and then jump back to the start of the clip and mark another scale keyframe and make it scale one. Let's move our newly animated word over so it starts its animation after cannot gets into place. If you watch it, you can see how it pops out of the T. Very cool. 
Well, I could walk you through how to create the rest of the kinetic type project, but I would just be repeating concepts I've already discussed. So, have at it and have fun. If you like this webisode, then you'll love my training DVD, Moving with Motion. Not only does it teach you motion, but it also focuses on design concepts that can help you out for the rest of your career. Plus, it delves into must-know features in motion. For one example, what if you have a clip that you want to place graphics behind and you don't want to spend the time to do it by hand? I'll show you how to let motion do the dirty work for you and you can take all the credit. So check out my motion training DVD jam packed with four hours of training for motion three and four users at creativecowtraining.net.